Good evening. I now call the September 9th, 2019 meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. I'm going to ask Commissioner Gary Roberts to lead us in the invocation, followed by Vice Chair Rankin uh, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand? Father, I thank you for the opportunity we have to serve this community. Thank you for Prescott Valley and the people that live here. Would you give us wisdom and knowledge and decisions we have to make, Lord, and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the people, with liberty and justice for all. And Vicki, can we get a roll call, please? Commissioner Rutherford is absent tonight. Commissioner Musara? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dusky? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Here. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Here. And Chairperson Zercher? Here. At this time, do we have a motion for the approval of the minutes from the August 12th, 2019 meeting? I'll make a motion to approve uh, August 12th, uh, 2019 minutes. I second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Moving on to item number six, announcements. Are there any announcements? All right. Well, good evening again. My name is Matt Zercher. I'm the chairperson of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and I will be presiding over the commission's deliberations on hearing items this evening. The Planning and Zoning Commission sits in an advisory capacity to the town council and reviews planning and zoning issues and forwards recommendations regarding these important issues to the council. The commission is bound by specific regulations and guidelines for considering applications, and there are also a surprising number of things the commission cannot take into consideration when reviewing an application. Finally, members of the commission are volunteers and we are not paid employees. We donate our time for the betterment of the town. Even so, we have over 50 years ex combined experience in land use and planning and zoning among us. We also receive our packets at least two weeks in advance, allowing us the opportunity to review applications and ask questions before the meeting. So before we get into our public hearing items, the, the rules for public participation here this evening. Please be aware that speakers are limited to three minute intervals. At the con conclusion of three minutes, we will inform you that your time is up. Please promptly conclude your remarks. We ask that you respect not just our time, but that of others as well who would like to speak this evening. If you wish to comment, please remember that you only may comment on the application being discussed and not on any other issue. Please speak clearly into the microphone and state your name for the record. I will ask that you direct your pertinent comments to the commission through the chairperson and not to the applicant staff or individuals within the audience. Please keep your comments brief and to the point. Try not to repeat what others have said. Speakers cannot donate their time to another speaker and you will only be allowed to speak once. Members of the audience are reminded not to make comments or outbursts from the audience. With that, we'll go to item number seven, public hearing items. Now we're also going to hear um, and under item number eight, um, under action items, so I'll read both into the record. So item number one in our public hearing items, zoning map change 19-008. Upon the application of the Cabin Opportunity Fund, a request for zoning map change from C2 PAD, Commercial General Sales and Services, Planned Area Development, to RS PAD, Residential Sales and Services, Planned Area Development, on approximately 17 acres, located at the northeast corner of State Route 69 and State Route 169. We also hear uh, the presentation on action item, uh, PDP 19-005, upon the application of the Cabin Opportunity Fund, a request for a preliminary development plan for 197 multifamily residential units on approximately 17 acres and approximately 12,000 square feet of commercial and approximately 30,000 square feet of future commercial office development on approximately eight acres located on the northeast corner of State Route 69 and State Route 169. Presenting this evening is Mr. Joe Scott. Joe, <coughs> take it away. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And uh, commissioners, um, <clears throat> yeah. So we'll be discussing both these at the same time and uh, asking for uh, action on separate motions uh, to clarify a few things. Uh, the uh, I want to <clears throat> more clarify the specific 
uh, acreage of the request uh, based on the gross acreage of the uh, table on the plan and not the net acreage. And so that is uh, probably 19 acres approximately going uh, from the C to the RS and then uh, 6.3 acres, which would be remain commercial uh, in area uh, one, uh, two and three. And I think that's the uh, 12,000 and then 20,000 square additional square feet of commercial and office. Uh, <clears throat> the subject property was part of annexation. Um, <clears throat> 04C that comprised 224 acres in the Dewey area um, approved in April of 2004. Uh, the zoning on the annexation property was designated R1L70 and C2 has existed in the time <clears throat> at the time of annexation. So um, <clears throat> the time of annexation, all the property within the boundary was outside the Prescott Valley General Plan 2020 boundary. And in uh, November of 2006, the Planning Commission recommended approval of a major general plan amendment that, among other things, included the expansion of uh, Tier 2 to the PAD 5-2 boundary. <clears throat> this was approved by uh, Council in uh, December of 2006. Uh, the PAD 5, um, the character is uh, a uh, diverse housing, commercial and office employment opportunities for people living in the vicinity of Highway 69 corridor. Uh, land uses include low density residential, medium density residential, uh, medium high density residential, regional commercial and neighborhood commercial and open space. And again, the rationale is the proximity uh, uh, to uh, State Route 69 and 169 provide excellent commercial living opportunities uh, to provide services to neighborhoods and also encourages development of wastewater collection and municipal water system expansion. <clears throat> and uh, along with the Tier 2 expansion 2006, um, a GPA 0601 amended the circula circulation element to include the future extension of Village Way as a 100-foot arterial roadway from Bradshaw Mountain Road to State Route 169. Real quick, Joe, I'm yeah. going to interrupt you. Sure. Um, our monitors are very, very blurry. I don't know if there's anything that can be done about that. They're what? The very blurry. We can't see anything on the oh, on our monitors. Jeez. This is clear. Well, they can see. That's all they can see. Well, I just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll continue. We're, we have the papers in front of okay. us, but yeah, yep. just. Yeah, I have some additional. I add some additional graphics. Okay, but that yeah, when you pack very, it, bl very blurry. <laughs> so whether you want to turn around and look at it, that's a, uh, explain a few more things. <clears throat> so again, um, looking at it on a regional basis, um, the in. Uh, <clears throat> This property in January 2007, uh, Cabin Opportunity Fund, at that time requested a zoning map change uh, from R1L70 to C2, uh, C2 to C2PAD on this same uh, 25 acres and uh, for the purpose of developing a commercial center with potential of 200,000 square feet of retail office and service uses. Uh, on March 12, 2007, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of this, and the Town Council approved it uh, on April of 2007. Uh, due to the economy and uh, other issues at the time, the project never developed. But the, uh, <clears throat> the plan uh, did. Here's the original plan here. And that was all commercial center, uh, and this established, identified the expand the uh, um, village way extension, the first leg of that. And again, uh, this property is still uh, zoned a C2 PAD commercial uh, at this time. And I'll discuss some of those traffic impacts a little bit later. <clears throat> and again, that's the. Uh, it's the uh, same property down here that's still zoned uh, commercial. And uh, in January 2008, the Planning Commission approved a zoning map change uh, for regional commercial and residential center on 58 acres from R1L70 to C2PAD. This was approved by council in 2008. And that's the property you see here, zone commercial and RS uh, for multifamily that was approved in 2008. And that's this area. So you see that was the, the master, the preliminary plan here with the uh, uh, commercial component and a multifamily component. And that also uh, established, uh, continued the alignment of the future village way extension. 
And recently, in uh, May of 2019, the Commission recommended approval of a plumbing development plan for the development of a, a new multifamily community providing 212 one-story, one-bedroom, and two-bedroom, and three-bedroom dwelling units on approximately 48 acres located east of State Route 69 at Bradshaw Mountain Road. And that would be the uh, area uh, up here, south of Bradshaw Mountain Road. And uh, that plan is uh, shown here. And here's Bradshaw Mountain Road, and this uh, also uh, we'll be establishing the, the northerly portion of the uh, Village Way extension. So currently, um, <clears throat> cabin opportunity is now requesting a zoning map change for the uh, Prescott Valley crossings on, again, the approximately 19 gross acres of the original C2PAD zoning and requesting that to RS to allow for 197 multifamily residential units, along with development of approximately uh, 42,000 square feet of commercial and office use on the remaining uh, parcels, I mean, six acres comprising uh, parcels two and three uh, per the preliminary development plan. Uh, Prescott Valley Crossings is located in uh, Prescott Valley limits, uh, bounded by the Agua Fria uh, River to the east and State Route 169 to the south, State Route 69 to the west with uh, currently low density residential development to the north. Uh, the site is surrounded, uh, surrounding area gently slopes to the east at approximately 3% with steeper slopes along the Agua Fria. A portion of land to the east uh, portion that's uh, currently in the commercial is currently impacted by the uh, uh, floodplain and this will require a uh, letter of map revision from FEMA uh, before that piece is developed, and that would be the uh, portion over here. And uh, this area, this map does show the uh, uh, the floodplain along the river here and the portions that, uh, of the site that's impacted. So the preliminary development plan identifies uh, conceptual building locations, parking, open space, <clears throat> identifies access and circulation features. Uh, the final building configuration, traffic, circulation, signage will be addressed as part of a final development plan submitted for each development phase. Uh, so I should point out the plan is uh, not uh, drawn to uh, standards. And a final development plan would include um, the plan meeting all standards, roadways, complying to town code, and also uh, fire standards. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that will be discussed in more detail. Uh, preliminary water and wastewater impact studies and drainage reports have been submitted for review and be required for approval uh, prior to final development plans. The 197 residential units within the Prescott Valley crossings will be served by internal network of eight inch uh, gravity sewer mains. The network of sewer mains will flow to a lift station at the south corner of the property. This area. And uh, the lift station will pump wastewater from this development uh, up to the town's lift station on Aztec Road to the north, and that is presently uh, right here, which is at the south end of the multifamily project and uh, quail wood. And so, <clears throat> Uh, there is currently no existing wastewater infrastructure in this vicinity. Again, the nearest wastewater facility is uh, at the Prescott Valley Lift Station, Aztec Road. Development project will be dependent on the owner in the town acquiring necessary easements uh, for sewer, and we could also follow the uh, right-of-way um, easement for uh, village way extension. So. Uh, So uh, the, the, as shown in the preliminary development plan, uh, there are 52 one-bedroom units, uh, 98 two-bedroom units, 47 three-bedroom units on parcel A, which is being uh, proposed for rezoning. All are single-story units in uh, detached and duplex configurations available on a lease basis. The site includes a community center and leasing office. And this is a <clears throat> elevation of the product and uh, colored rendering of uh, what they are proposed to look like. So again, as discussed uh, for circulation, uh, development will complete the southern portion of Village Way Extension South. Uh, the distinction may also 
uh, serve as the same easement for sewer. <clears throat> a traffic impact analysis, analysis was done and approved by the Arizona Department of Transportation for access from State Routes uh, 69 and 169. Again, the main uh, entrance is uh, from 169, supposed to have a mer secondary emergency access uh, off of uh, 69. Uh, ADOT uh, has proposed that Donovan Lane no longer connect to Highway 69 at the 16 location because of concerns with the um, traffic at the uh, intersection and um, rather they for the, uh, Donovan Lane would provide be access to Donovan Lane provided through the project via dedicated right-of-ways. Uh, staff understands ADOT uh, may have the authority or will have the authority to make and enforce a uh, decision to do the, the failure of the uh, state route 69 and 169 signal um, and provide an alternative route when the streets are available. And that's my understanding. Then they are uh, proposing at some future date to try to do a roundabout at that intersection. And this project would uh, pay in a portion of that. Um, Again, but the uh, developer uh, will not be uh, enforcing. The access is currently provided Denovan Lane through the project, and uh, the developer won't be enforcing closing that down. That would be entirely up to uh, ADOT. And uh, this chart, chart here just shows uh, discussing that the property is a, a currently uh, commercial. And this just uh, shows the uh, a difference in uh, traffic between the currently proposed residential and the uh, existing commercial. And uh, I guess the main line is the, uh, the uh, total weekday trips, the difference between 1936 and possibly 4608 if uh, it were developed as all commercial uh, for uh, total daily trips. And that's the uh, uh, difference. So this is a, a uh, reduction in the density and of the project of the property. So the requested RS zoning and uh, uh, an existing C2 PAD zoning, which will remain the six acres, is intended to provide the most development flexibility for the property. Uh, planned area development districts are zoning districts established uh, over underlying zoning districts and which modify the regulations of the district in which they are combined. PADs allow for groups of structures to be designed for construction as unified projects under a plan. The purpose of PADs to help develop large areas, encourage variations of environments, commercial facilities, building styles, lot sizes, lot arrangements, and street and utilities. Again, a fond development plan uh, is required uh, for any future phase. A neighborhood meeting uh, it was uh, held on August 8th, 2019, with the property notice within 1,000 feet being notified, and you were uh, provided with a report on the neighborhood meeting. So uh, <clears throat> commissioners asked to first consider ZMC 1908 and then uh, PDP 1905 with a separate motion. Uh, commission being asked to consider if the request of the rezoning map change from C2PAD to RS is in conformance with the general plan, <clears throat> which I stated it was, and appropriate with the limitations set forth and the conditions to guide and direct uh, the development of the site. Uh, and uh, so if uh, staff recommends approval of the rezoning, then they uh, recommend a separate motion on the uh, preliminary development plan. Thank you, Joe. I'm real for any questions, mm -hmm. and the uh, applicant is also here if you have any questions. Okay. This time we'll take uh, questions from the commission of staff. Does anyone have any questions of staff? What's, what's the timeline on this? Uh, well, um, Production timeline. The, it would take, obviously, have to have sewer. Uh, so there has to be work done to establish uh, easements for a sewer line and develop that. I can't give you an uh, exact time. I'm uh, sure it'll be uh, okay. uh, many months to a year, probably, at least to get that something like that established. So it's not going to be okay. overnight. And uh, my question would be uh, along the lines of timing on the uh, extension of uh, the road from the uh, existing uh, development uh, of the double white homes uh, to the to this development uh, would that be done uh, simultaneously with the development of this project or would that be an afterthought 
uh, again, this would establish the, the one uh, portion. Uh, most likely, again, a uh, right-of-way easement would follow probably a utility easement for sewer, and so that would track probably the same uh, uh, period would uh, be, you know, months or years, uh, you know, okay. to a month or year to get that probably something okay. in place for that. Mm -hmm. Again, this project is not dependent upon that extension being made and the access provided is ad adequate for the uh, okay. impacts. Thank okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Scott, the, um, I think as a follow-up to that, um, the <clears throat> Dunvin... Dunavon um, roadway, which is, if I saw it right, is pretty much a, a dirt or gravel road now. As it goes north, does it at any point, um, does it connect back with Highway 69 at any point? I, I don't believe there's any connection back out. <clears throat> so so in, the current, in the current drawing, um, and if... if um, uh, ADOT doesn't allow that access directly onto Highway 69. Um, the only way what? to get um, north of the property to those properties that are out there on Donovan Lane uh, is to come through this project. Is that correct? That, that, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. So there, you know, could be some local streets. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, the idea would be the uh, village way would be extended, and that would be. Uh, provide a major arterial access eventually for for those properties because then the, the the main access which is actually on highway 69 comes in and looks like it's a fairly wide roadway or one, in, one, one, 169 or 169 correct my apology um, and it kind of okay. comes up and just dead ends there mm -hmm. is that expected for further or is that um, to allow uh, the people that are north of this project to have access onto 169 Again, the plan is, is to, as shown in the general plan amendment, to extend that village way from 169 all the way up through these properties or adjacent to them up to Bradshaw Mountain Road. And uh, that would provide that arterial access to either Bradshaw Mountain Road or to uh, 169. No, no, that I understand. Oh, gotcha. But when you, um, the, the footprint, this one? Yeah. Is the, the main access coming off 169. That's village way is Village Way, and it oh, comes no. north, but then it just kind of ends right there. Right. There, there needs to be, uh, that would be dedicated through this project, and uh, the, the town and the, uh, needs to obtain an easement f to extend that roadway, okay. the property. Uh, and, and, and no problem there. So the, the, the properties that are north of, of this project that right now rely on Denovan Lane, I'm probably pronouncing that Denovan, name wrong. Whatever. I apologize. Um, they won't have access to Village Way? Well, well, they'll have access to this portion of it, to the developed portion. I mean, I mean they'd have to come through uh, Denman Lane and then take the local streets to this project over to uh, Village Way. Okay, but as, as in the future, when Village Way is... Extended. Uh, goes, it goes extended. Correct. Those properties will have access through there? They would have to be, uh, gain some easements and stuff, but um, it, it would. Uh, do you have any feel then also is that at the intersection of Village Way and 169, uh, the time frame as to when um, a stoplight would be put in there uh, in conjunction with this I, I, project? For the last traffic study, I did not see a recommendation that it needed a signal at this time. Uh, there could be warrants for it uh, later when the uh, roadway is extended at, at this point. So I don't know. That would be with additional development at some point. It, it's not required for this project uh, based on the traffic study. So, the, so the stoplight's not required as part of this no, project? Not this time for this project. Most likely in the future, uh, that could be warranted. And Joe, just to piggyback off of uh, one of Larry's questions, looking at the 2007 map compared to the most recent map um, in terms of the preliminary development plans, it looks like Donovan, even 12 years ago, was supposed to have its egress-ingress moved to Village Way. Is that correct? It does appear that way on the maps. Uh, uh, the plan was drawn that way. Uh, well, whether ADOT, I, I, maybe the applicant knows whether ADOT had that same intention at the time. I don't recall uh, if ADOT had that intention at the time, tell the truth. I mean, it, but the plan was drawn that way. The direct route was not provided. I can certainly uh, look into that, but that's okay. the way it looks. 
Commissioner Dusky? Yeah, uh, Joe, on that access through the development, the proposed access, would that infer that uh, those would be city streets or town streets? Uh, and as so, would they then have restrictions on them regarding load and truck size and things of that nature? I don't know there would be any restrictions. I believe the roads would have to be built. I believe the standards required by both the fire code and town code would uh, handle uh, probably the vehicles that would be anticipated. But I can well, check, Often in residential that, areas, there are posted signs for I, trucks over a certain size and weight and so forth. And I wondered about that going through here since we know that given the situation that there would be large vehicles, trucks, et cetera, going down those city streets through this residential area. And I think that might be open Pandora's box. I, I don't know what that limitation would be <clears throat> at this point. Okay. I, I can follow up on that. Commissioner Roberts. Hey, sir, is, am I looking at this map correctly? There's only two entrances into this development? Yes. yes. Exhibit C. Oh. Well, again, uh, yeah, there's uh, the main entrance and then the secondary emergency access at this time proposed off of uh, 69. Okay. Thanks. Correct. Yeah. But, but we don't know for sure if that emergency exit is going to be approved by ADOT? I would defer that to the applicant about how close they are. I, I know some kind of secondary access can be needed for the uh, fire code. <clears throat> so I, I would let them address that with the progress on that. You had alluded to a roundabout. Would that roundabout be at the intersection of 69 and 169? That's my understanding what, <clears throat> what ADOT eventually wants to do at that intersection. Okay. okay. I'd like to ask the applicant to step forward. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mark Reddy. I'm representing Good. Cab. Get a little closer. My name is Mark Reddy. I'm with RBI. I'm representing the owner. Thank you for being here this evening. So uh, do you have anything to add to the presentation? Uh, no, I, I would just respond to a couple of the questions that came up. Um, there was one question regarding the emergency access. We, we've been working with ADOT for the last 12 to 18 months on this project to uh, go through the traffic impact study and to try to get an access permit to the state highway. And what they've told us is that they have for quite a long time um, indicated that the current intersection at Donovan Lane and State Route 169 is a safety concern of theirs. It's very close to the intersection, as you can see. ADOT has plans to build a major roundabout at that location, and that entrance would impede their ability to develop that roundabout. So they have plans to eventually um, relocate that. As we've been working with them, our project uh, was required to provide an alternative access point to the Donovan Lane connection now in order for us to get an access permit to the state highway. And so what you see on our plan is an alternate access from the current alignment, which is a dirt road all the way down. We would pave it from our property line down about two thirds of the way till you get to that exception parcel and then it veers to the east and ultimately connects to Village Way uh, where you would come out to a full intersection. We've also been working with the developer to the south, the Mortimer Farms project, and we've made sure that the alignment location for the intersection works with their project as well. So that will be the permanent intersection connecting the north and the south to State Route 169. Um, there was a question about um, the ability for trucks to be able to drive through that project. We would have to build all of our roads to city standard that it can accommodate um, the full load of fire trucks and trash trucks, and that would accommodate for horse trailers and others as well. So we would definitely be meeting those criteria uh, as a requirement if for fire department, if nothing else, but we also are going to have trash trucks coming into our site as well. So those would be built to, uh, to meet city standard in terms of the weight distribution and that kind of thing. So. 
Um, there shouldn't be any issues with that. The other thing that I'll mention is um, we also would be required to meet the basic turning radius requirements for fire truck access, which would also accommodate the trailers that are coming from the north into the site. Right now they have a straight shot down, and I know there's been some concern about their ability to turn and get to the intersection at Village Way, and so we would make sure that we design the intersections and the turning radiuses to meet the fire department requirements, which I believe is a 50-foot outside diameter, or outside radius turn movement, which would accommodate um, trailer, trailer access as well. So there shouldn't be any concerns or issues in terms of those vehicles being able to use that. Um, long term, I think the goal is that Village Way would be the ultimate access point for all of those properties. So as that connects further to the north, those property owners to the north would be able to access that road and have a more direct shot to get out. But in the, min in the meantime, the state, uh, uh, ADOT, will, um, has told us that their intent is to close that connection once the new one is built. So that's the plan. It's not something that we're advocating. We, we don't really, in fact, our preference would be to not close it because it would mean that they don't have to drive through our site. Uh, but that was a requirement of ADOT that we're having to comply with. So okay. were there, I think I addressed, if there's any other questions, I'm happy to try to address them as well. No, I think I'm, I'm good. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, still, I'm still a little concerned about the timeline, but that's okay. Well, so because let me address that a little bit more. Our goal is to get this thing built as quickly as we can. Well, We've, I just, the market's I, there. Yeah. We have to secure easements to get the sewer line up to the lift station at, um, I think it's at Kachina. Um, and so we're going to be working with the town to get that done. As soon as we can get that done, you know, we'll be moving forward with I our feel a little bit more plan. comfortable since you've been working with ADOT for 18 months or so. We actually have an agreement with ADOT, um, and we're working on a development agreement to be finalized right now. And, and they've reviewed our traffic study. They've, they've accepted our traffic study. We have agreed to the terms of the development agreement. And so we're just going through the process of finalizing that right now. And that's been ongoing for about 18 months. So we started it a long time ago. Is it anticipated for Village Way to be expanded from existing two lane to four lanes? I believe it is designated as a, I think a major collector, I think a, ultimately a four lane road, I believe, okay. is what we're gonna be dedicating the full right of way on our project and then we'll be building the first two lanes and then as traffic warrants expansions, then it'll be expanded, but we'll be dedicating the full right of way through our project so the town would never have to come back to us later and ask for more right of way and we're not gonna be building within you know, those future areas as well. I think that would be very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'll mention, and, and Joe kind of touched on it, but just because it's been a, a question that a lot of people have asked, is um, the current zoning is C2 commercial, and the original plan was for just under 200,000 square feet. I think he had a table up there that showed it, but there was about 4,600 trips per day that, was, that would be planned if that commercial development were to occur. And I think the peak hour uh, trips combined was about 460 peak hour trips in the evening. With our proposed plan, um, the total trips per day would be 1,936, and the total peak hour trips would be about 140. So it's about a 65% reduction in peak hour trips with our plan versus the original plan that currently is allowed under the current zoning. And so I know there's been a lot of concerns about traffic. The other thing that I'll mention is that part of our plan includes putting in a dedicated right turn lane on 169 to 69. So right now there's a big backup from westbound cars trying to turn onto 69 from 169. So part of our project will include a dedicated right turn lane, which will substantially alleviate that backup of traffic and help the flow of traffic. There'll also be, I believe the signal is gonna have a, um, a continuous right turn lane, a right turn so that those cars can get through that queue faster. So this project, even though we're gonna be bringing in more trips, we're gonna be providing improvements that are gonna be in enhancing or increasing the movement of traffic and circulation through there. And then of course, when ADOT builds the roundabout, um, that'll substantially even increase it more. Um, so that'll really help the in area. In your talks with ADOT, is the, the roundabout gonna be the priority or is the, the stoplight at Valley going to be, uh, is that gonna be something that's gonna happen before or, or do you feel after the roundabout? 
Commissioner, the ADOT's number one priority is to get the roundabout built at the intersection of 69 and 169. The signal, uh, you're talking about the signal at, at 169 and Village Way, that would be provided when the warrants command it. So the current traffic study doesn't justify a signal at that location. And so as soon as there's enough development to, war every time a new project comes in, they have to update the traffic study and ADOT will review that. And at the point in, in those developments where it triggers the need for a traffic signal, ADOT will require it at that time by that particular developer. So um, currently it's not warranted with our project at full build out. So that would be at some point down the road um, when that tr signal is warranted. So Mr. Scott, I, um, a question then is that since we're, since ADOT's plan is to basically shut down Denovan Lane at 169 at some point, correct? And also uh, approve the access which you haven't finalized yet? We've, we've finalized the location of it with ADOT. They've approved the location. Um, the other thing that I'll mention that I didn't mention is we're also going to be building a dedicated left turn lane from eastbound 169 into our project. And we're also working with the Mortimer Farms development to provide a dedicated left turn lane opposite of ours that goes into their project as well. So in addition to the right turn lane that we're providing, we're gonna be providing a left turn pocket so cars coming off of 69 into 169 will get out of the flow of traffic as they make their left turn into our project. And that's all been reviewed by ADOT. The plan's been accepted by them and we're going through that process of finalizing the, the agreement. So I guess, Mr. Scott, my question would be um, is, with the conditions for us to vote on this tonight, should um, that um, at those accesses on 169 on Village Way should that be part of the conditions for us to approve this tonight? I think that's that's fine to add to that a secondary access uh, would be required uh, for uh, for the project for a final development plan. I guess I'm with the with the gentleman explaining the turn lanes and so forth that are going to come off of and onto 169 from from Village Way. Um, is I, I don't see that as part of the conditions. That, that, that's 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 all outlined in the traffic study. So we could just say uh, again compliance. If we just say compliance uh, with the approved uh, uh, traffic impact analysis, okay. which ex which which covers that. Okay. okay. So, could include uh, the, uh, I'm good with uh, the, yeah, the secondary access, um, and, and taking nothing away from the gentleman. I don't want you to think. No, no, no. I, no, mean, no. Right I think now we're relying agree. on that's his fine. word. I kind of like <laughs> well, to that, know that, that, that's, that's rock that's, solid. That's my suggestion. Uh, um, okay. So uh, compliance with the traffic analysis for uh, the uh, secondary access and uh, lane configurations. And I would just add that ADOT will not grant our access permit until we've conformed to all of those anyway. So it, we have to do it regardless of whether the town stipulates it or not. But it is in the... Because obviously that's a pretty good investment on your part. And um, so I'd like to right. be able yep. to see that too. I'm sure the council will also. Are there any more questions from the commission of the applicant or staff? No, no thank you. Okay. At this time, I'd open the floor to public comment. Um, those wishing to address the commission, please just kind of, even if you want to form a line here in the middle, please do so. Please remember you'll have three minutes. Ma'am, if you want to come up, you're first. My name is Estella Carlson. I live at 545 oh. South Donovan. The one thing that has not been mentioned here is that Dewey approved a super pumper at the southeast corner of 69 and 169 for future development. No one has taken that into consideration. Okay. There's, I'm, I'm apprehensive about, and I think you have my letter, about horse trailers and hay trailers going through a development where there are children. We need two lanes to make a left turn with four horse trailers. Sometimes we get six horses, sometimes we get 12. I think it's a dangerous situation to have a right of way for people to the north who have been there with horse properties for 20, 30 years to have to go through a development with children. 
You can't stop those horse trailers on a dime. If you put your brakes on, truck brakes, trailer brakes, those horses will push you 20 feet while they're swaying back and forth. It's just a very, very dangerous thing. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Carol Stensrud. I live at 1422 South Gone Fishing Road in Dewey, which is directly uh, on River Drive, right off of River Drive, the turn there at the Awafria Bridge, just beyond Mortimer's Farm. So I live in Dewey Humboldt. And, you know, I do appreciate having talked to the developers tonight that they're seeking to have less impact on what's happening. However, um, and I don't, this will not sound very good, but, you know, it's Prescott Valley that's getting the tax benefit, but basically this traffic situation is already a nightmare out there. I don't know if you're aware, but every time there's some 17 crisis, the exit on 169 backs the traffic up way beyond River Drive, way beyond the medical center, up the road. I have actual pictures of it from a year ago. And now we're going to put this extra traffic there across from the farm. I'm saying we exit on River Drive, which is beyond the bridge, right beyond the bridge. Um, it's nice to think about the development. That's their job. But we're saying this community, Prescott Valley, gets the benefit, but the residents who live out there, we know how the traffic works. We get the impact. We're asking you what's going to be done to help us. Um, Gary Mortimer is present tonight. He owns the farm. Actually, you should be out there if you haven't been there when the, when the pumpkin festival happens. How in the world with all of that, which is a huge boost to our area and to our whole community to have the farm, are we going to handle all of this traffic with one right turn that already backs way up, one left turn, there is one single lane in the middle, and you're going to get all those off and on, and then there's Old Black Canyon City right there behind, beside 69. You know, so I do want to commend the developers for thinking about less impact, but they haven't solved all the problems with this traffic yet. We really, really, really need your help. Um, lastly, just as you know, it's a huge truck route, huge truck route, every day, 69, 169, out to the landfill back, and so forth. Um, the other thing I'd like to know is what type of commercial they're planning to attract. I just finished chairing the board of Firewise for Dewey Humboldt. I am asking that they consider not just one egress, ingress, four onto 69 for the um, for the fire safety. We went through the Goodwin fire two years ago. We know what happened on Kachina. When emergency vehicles are going up and down the only road you have, you cannot get residents out. We would already be offloading those onto 69. We're asking you require two emergency accesses. And lastly, um, just wondering, they mentioned the FEMA study in order to deal with some of their extra need for accesses. I'm trusting that is not going to impact the river. We live over the Aquafria River. So, uh, I'm sorry, the um, Aquafria Aquifer. Um, thank you so much for letting me share my concerns. Appreciate it. Thank you. How are you doing this evening? My name is Joe Bassett. My family, uh, if I had a little laser pointer, I'd show you exactly where it's at. At the top of that screen, you can actually see a horse training track right there. My dad, my dad trained race horses for 45 years. I've trained race horses for the last 15 years. Um, at times, there's been 80 to 100 head of horses there, race horses. Um, my concern with this deal is the access on Donovan Lane. There's semis of hay going in there. Not just one semi, but a trailer behind that semi full of hay. My trailer alone is 32 feet long, not including the truck, okay? Um, to get that trailer through, not just my trailer, but that semi trailer through that subdivision, it's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be a mess. You don't wanna pull a, you don't wanna pull a horse trailer, a hay trailer, manure leaving on a weekly basis on a semi 
you don't want to go through a neighborhood like that. That that that's my uh, my hang up with this whole deal is the access on Donovan Lane. I understand the traffic's a mess on 169. It's a mess on 69. It's been that way for years. But for 45 years we've been there, and it's it's a business that we run out of that place, and that that would hinder our business by denying us a straight access on Donovan Lane, on 169. No matter what happens in this deal, you guys are going to build this deal, approve the deal, fine, whatever. But you have to give us access, whether it's a gate, whether it's a gate with a, with a, uh, a keypad. Everybody on Donovan Lane gets a, gets a clicker, whatever it is. You cannot take away Donovan Lane on us like that. It would be a mess. It would, it, it would be bad, not only for us, but for the people that live there. They don't want to see horse trailers. They don't want to see horse manure leaving there. It, it, it would just be a bad deal. And I appreciate you guys' time. I appreciate, appreciate you guys considering this whole deal. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Joe Canizaro. I live in the villages at Lynx Creek. My concern basically is when you extend that village way, you're going to go up to uh, uh, the road that comes out of Quailwood, and that's going to be a T, and there's Dorn Homes going in there, okay? So you're going to provide a straight through all the way into Lynx Creek and use that exit to get out to 169. You're going to have traffic running from 169 all the way up through villages and exiting village way onto 169. I'm just saying there's going to be a lot of traffic going on that village way. Um, to consider that. Thank Sir, you. could you tell me your last name again? I can't. You can't, please. <laughs> it's a C A N N I Z Z A R O. A R O. A R O. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else wishing to address the commission? Then I'm going to close public comment. I'd like to invite the applicant back up. Thank you. I'm wondering if you could actually speak to the horse trailers and the semis going through. I think there's some very valid points about you know semis with hay and big horse trailers going through a development like this and wanting to get your input on it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, um, we are not the, our development is not proposing that we close Donovan Lane down. It's coming directly from ADOT because they have indicated that it's an unsafe situation. That intersection gets backed up. Those cars can't turn in and out. They can't turn left, usually can't turn right. Um, it's, 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 they have indicated to us that it is a major safety hazard. And when they build the roundabout, um, that, enter, that, that exit onto 160, or 169 has to go away anyway because you can't put an intersection in the middle of a roundabout where you have two other streets converging in. So they have already indicated to us that it's going to be closed one way or the other. And I don't it's, think anyone disagrees with yeah. that. I mean, it's a very safe, unsafe uh, intersection there. I, you know, relating to the concerns have been, that have been raised in terms of access from Donovan to Village sure. going through a residential development, um, wanting if you can address that, those concerns sure. specifically. Sure. Okay. So I think the long-term plan is that when Village Way is extended, those properties would have access to a major collector road. I don't know what the specific situation is with the individual property owners and how they connect, but the long-term goal is to provide them with better access than they have today to a major uh, collector road that has a major intersection with multiple ways to get in and out of the site. You can go to the north, you can go to the south. So that's the goal. And you know we have to start somewhere. We can't build it all at once. We've got to get the right-of-way. We, we're going to do our part by contributing the right-of-way and building our section. The two developments that Joe mentioned to the north are also dedicating the right-of-way and building their section. So there's a gap in the middle that has to be connected, and that'll occur over time. In the meantime, what we're really doing is providing an interim solution that provides access access to those property owners through our development. There's really not a lot of options that we have until we build that road. So our goal is to make sure 
that we design it so that it's safe um, for those vehicles to get in and out. Um, in terms of hay dropping off of those trucks, I, I don't have a lot of experience with that, so I don't know what, an, what impact that's going to have. Um, but I would imagine it's not substantial. I don't, I, I don't know much about horse droppings falling off trailers, but I would imagine it's not something that happens all the time. Um, certainly it could happen on occasion, and we'd have to clean it up, but um, I don't think that's going to be a major problem. And as I mentioned before, we're going to make sure that we design it so that the turning radiuses work for those vehicles. So I understand the concern. It's not as easy and ideal as having a straight shot. I get that. Um, but we're in a position where ADOT is forcing this decision to be made, and so we're having to come up with the best solution that we can to solve that problem. And we we think we've done that uh, on an interim basis with this plan, and we think that the town is working um, diligently for the long-term solution, which is Village, Village Way going through there. So, well, and, and my thought is that in the in the plan as it is now, um, I, I understand where it would um, throw a little fear in the people that would be driving the trucks because as you come down um, Denovan you um, are making a, a rather sharp turn to uh, in your plan to get over to um, Village Way. Um, and I, I'm just wondering if there, if you have looked at alternatives of even um, taking um, uh, where Denovan comes down and hits the, the east-west, the north border that goes east-west there, and running a roadway there over to Village Way, would that give you give them a better angle and not interfere with your community at all we, and we I'm, did, I'm just throwing yeah, that out as no, a thought we, yeah we looked at that as an alternative and um we thought that this was the best solution because it kept the easement in place now one of the things i will mention is this is what, what you're looking at now is a hand sketch concept that's part of the preliminary development plan joe mentioned we have to go through a final development plan and the geometry of that intersection is going to change probably pretty dramatically to help make those turns so we'll be working through that we talked before the meeting about the radius requirements for that intersection those have not been incorporated into this plan so that's all part of the next step in this process is if we are successful with the zoning then we would get this plan digitized into the computer we'd start working on the turning radiuses and making sure all those all the geometry works for those intersections so it won't look exactly like you're seeing it on the screen it'll it'll be a little bit more of a smooth transition on that intersection and I guess I just look at it as then I'm assuming that that those properties on the the north side there uh, of that of your east east-west boundary on the north that uh, that's um, horse property that is abutting your 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 property there and so the only reason that I thought I, I throw that out there is simply because then it would give almost a, an additional uh, barrier for those homes within your project uh, to that horse property um, just throwing it out as a thought that maybe it's an option that could be looked at that would solve them a lot of concerns yeah the other the other issue that we had to deal with is that there are three two or three businesses in the exception parcel that currently use that same access point in and out and we've got to provide them with access as well to the new intersection and having them head north and come around is a little bit um, probably much to ask for their customers to do. And so that was another thing that came, kind of went into our design thought process as we were trying to figure out the best so way. So in your that. talks with, with the ADOT, uh, when Denovan comes down and they want to, to stop Denovan there, that little piece of commercial property that kind of sits in the middle of your project, they're willing to keep that, ADOT's willing to keep that open but close Denovan? Yeah, the parking area and the drive aisle would go all the way down. It just wouldn't connect to the state highway right of way. So it, there's a, you can see it. There's kind of a turnaround there so that cars coming in can pull in to those businesses. Then they can turn around on that cul-de-sac and come back out. Yeah, as you can see on that. On but that. but so the, that was, the parcel that comes in that's the little commercial area that exists there now, that will still have access to 169. No, it will not. It, it will not. have to access. They're going to have to come way. through your Correct. project. Yes. They okay. will come into Village Way and then come across that. that that's what I didn't road. understand, yeah. so thank you. Yep. Um, one of the conditions I'd like to add to this, um, I because it seems like there's just too many moving parts with this project, I'd like the commission to actually see the final development plan before it goes to council. So we'd have to approve the final development plan and then goes to council. So that would be one of my conditions of approval 
this evening. I'm still a little nervous about emergency uh, availability on this too. Since it's a lot of open ground out there, um, we need to see the FDP. Uh, FDP. Final development plan. Yeah, final development plan, yeah. We need to see that, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, I see that. Uh, I was going to say the same thing. I don't feel comfortable right now with the project, to be honest with you, because of the traffic, because of the horse trailers and all the things that are going on, and there are only two entrances into the park. Yeah. I, I just have, I don't and feel comfortable. So, so we, we have, I mean, so I'm kind of just talking to the commission here for a second. So we have a few options. I mean, we could approve it with the condition of, you know, that preliminary development plan and then with the condition that we see a final development plan, or we can table this for until we get more information. Uh, can I can I speak real quick just to address that? I, I think part of the challenge with with doing that is that um, in order for us to get to the final development plan, there's a pretty substantial investment that the owner has to make to do all of the design work, and having to do that before we know if we even have zoning is a real challenge because we've got uh, several hundred thousand dollars in design documents and engineering studies that have to be done, and so usually the way the process works is the zoning goes with the preliminary development plan once. We we know we have the zoning entitlements, then we can invest in the final development plan, which requires all the engineering documents. So it is a little bit of a challenge for us to agree to that stipulation. I mean, we, we would support just going through the preliminary development plan and the zoning approval for that particular reason, because it would be tough for us to delay all of that and still have the risk of not getting the zoning. And then we've invested in all of that effort. Um, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. You'd approve the zoning, but not the preliminary no, development this plan? Oh, okay. This more okay. Site plan, though, though. I think we could support so, that. So, right. Well, we can... If, if that was the intent, I think we could probably support tabling the preliminary development plan, but not the zoning. We can, we can approve that. We can approve the zoning. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We can, we can approve the yeah. zoning. Mm -hmm. Oh, zone I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So any other questions of the commission or staff? I, I do have a commission a question for you, Joe. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Okay. This may be way out in left field, but has anybody ever considered expediting the completion of Village Way? And solve all this problem? I, I, I'd have to leave that to the director. I, I don't know the, the timing, how quickly that can be accomplished. One of the, one know. of the um, speak, speakers during public comment mentioned a super pumper project. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. I haven't seen the plan. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I think I can address it. And, and I don't know that I know the exact status, but I know at one point there was a plan for the super pumper. And when we were working with ADOT, we actually incorporated that into our traffic impact study. In fact, they required us to incorporate that plan into our traffic impact study. And when I mentioned earlier that we've designed a left turn pocket from 169 into our site, we also designed a left turn pocket opposite of ours into the super pumper site. So it was designed to accommodate left turn pockets into both developments, the super pumper gas station development as well as our gas station. And we designed it so that it worked um, within the, that there was a spacing requirement between the two. And the design of that, let those two left turn pockets worked uh, perfectly to accommodate both developments. And that was included, not only was that included in our TIA, but the traffic impacts of the super pumper were also included in our TIA. So that was all accounted for in the study that ADOT reviewed for us. So I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Are there any other questions of the commission of, of John? Did staff? I get an answer to my question, sir? I, I, I don't know this, uh, how quickly that can be accomplished. Sorry, Joe. Okay, I sorry. don't know how quickly that be accomplished. Maybe the director has a uh, better idea, but I, I, I don't yet help. Uh, as you might be aware, a, a CFD was actually approved uh, for the undertaking of all the public infrastructure for this area. It was based on the plan that Joe illustrated further to the north off of Kachino. Unfortunately, we uh, ran into the Great Recession 
and that uh, CFD, while it was formed, it never came to fruition. There was never a bond hearing necessary to issue bonds, uh, but it is on the books. That would be one mechanism, however, this jurisdiction, um, speaking for my experience with the town council, there's little likelihood that uh, this jurisdiction would approve another CFD given the enormous efforts that were put forth to remedy problems with existing CFDs during the uh, Great Recession. So to answer Rick's question directly, uh, there has been some discussion about doing that. However, it uh, fell short because of the recession. There are other properties further to the north uh, which are obligated to uh, fill in the blank as those properties are developed. Uh, we expect it to be a nearer future than later because of the current state of the economy. Uh, we've also had expressions from property owners intervening between the two terminuses of this road to seek commercial development. And as those properties seek commercial development, they'll be obligated to continue to expand or complete that roadway. Uh, is it a perfect scenario? No. Uh, however, given the limited tools we have presently, it's the best we have. The other thing I'd like to remark about is to the chairperson's stipulation proposed. There have been instances, and uh, Rick was the, the chairperson when uh, several of those occurred, where a preliminary development plan was approved in concert with the zoning because it is a conceptual uh, development plan. But prior to the council considering a final development plan, it would first be presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Given the concerns about traffic movements through and, and beyond the site, I think that that has particular merit here, and we would support that stipulation. Again, zoning would continue forward, so they would have ample opportunity to uh, bring the investment, but at the same time, you would be looking at the final development plan before it goes to the town council. Other questions? No, thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions or comments, concerns from the commission? All right. So at this point in time, I'd ask for a motion to approve zoning map change 19-008 with the conditions. Um, Chairman, I'll make that motion to approve ZMC 19-008 with the uh, approved conditions. And also the conditions are with regard to the traffic, the addition of the traffic impact analysis, the you know, recommendations uh, with that. Um, it's been moved, is there a second? I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. A roll call vote, please. Commissioner Massara? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dusky? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. And action on number one, preliminary, excuse me, preliminary development plan 19-005. Is there a motion to approve, with, and especially with the condition that the commission will approve the final development plan for this project before it goes to council? I'll so move. Is there a second? I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Musara? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dusky? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. Chairperson Zercher? Yes. Moving, moving, moving on to action item number two, re, uh, reversionary plat 19-013 upon the application of Thomas Marty, a request for reversionary plat to combine four lots into one lot located on the northeast corner of Grizzly Bear Drive and Valley Road. Uh, thank you, Chairman Commissioners. Yes, uh, this uh, property involves uh, <coughs> lots in both the Unit uh, 7 and 14, uh, which were approved in Yavapai County in 1970 and were in, uh, incorporated in Prescott Valley in 1978. The site was previously an auto repair business and rental truck business. Having separate vacant lots <coughs> was a violation. The property owner recently purchased the moving the business for a moving business. And the owner now wishes to combine the four lots to comply with town code standards and staff recommends approval of RP 1903 and recommends it be forwarded to council uh, with a recommendation for approval with the uh, one stipulation. 
Thank you. Any questions of staff? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve RP19-013? I move to approve uh, RP19-013. Is there a second? No second. So we move, to, move to seconder. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Massara? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Commissioner Dusky? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. All right, moving on to item number nine, call to public. Consideration and discussion of comments from the public. Those wishing to address the Planning and Zoning Commission need not, re need not request permission in advance. Action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or rescheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. Is there anyone wishing to address the commission? Seeing none, we'll close call to public and go to item number 10, adjournment of the uh, commission meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved, moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you.